Chapter 391, Ambitious At the current moment, there were at least 80,000 practitioners and metahumans gathered at the Pattaya coastline, as they lined up for ferries as if rushing for a temple fair. It was only just now that the local tourist industry learned about the spirit chi dispersion from the much-anticipated remains. Thus, all available boats were immediately released to the site, but the number was still clearly not enough. Meanwhile, Lu Xu attempted to carry people in the water for the first time in his life. After being transported underground to the seashore with Anthony's help, Lu Xu took over and tried to lead Lu Xiaoyu across the sea. Actually, it was not an easy feat for a Class C, but as early as the train incident the other day, Lu Xu had managed to convert his celestial powers into elemental forces for use, making him much more powerful in water. He created a giant bubble in the sea, lined with reinforced seawater barriers, which allowed Lu Xiaoyu to breathe freely inside. The water was relatively cloudy closer to the coast, and gradually turned clear only after 20 minutes. Lu Xu shot a glance at Lu Xiaoyu, who appeared ecstatic as if she had just entered an aquarium. Suddenly, a thought crossed Lu Xu's mind. Slowing down, he said, fish. Maybe they eat snacks. Lu Xiaoyu's face lit up at the idea, and quickly took out a pack of chips from her ring. Holding a handful of ground chips in her palm, she reached out her hand beyond the bubble, attracting schools of fish around her hands. In fact, Pattaya's seashore was not a place for pretty fish and corrals. But Lu Xiaoyu was deeply intrigued by the novelty of the fresh experience. Watching her silently, Lu Xu realized the world owed Lu Xiaoyu a colorful childhood. After another twenty minutes, Lu Xiaoyu suddenly asked, Are we lost, Lu Xu? Impossible. Lu Xu denied without hesitation. I'm sure we are. It's supposed to be a thirty minutes distance and you are not slower than those fairies. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus one hundred and ninety-nine. It's because I wanted to show you the scenery here. Lu Xu insisted. Good try. Indeed, Lu Xu lost his way. He had never been to Ko Chang. Thus, with only a rough glimpse over the map beforehand and an inaccurate sense of direction underwater, he did not even realize that they were 60 degrees off the correct direction. When they finally arrived at Ko Chang, many tents had already been erected on the island. Currently, the local population of practitioners was akin to a pyramid, in which there was a drastic decrease in the number beyond Class D. At the same time, due to the huge number of practitioners in total, a more intimate connection was observed between practitioners and commoners, resulting in an industry particularly working for the former. Inevitably, scams appeared too. There was once a joke that went, Hello, I am Monkey King and I can exempt you from death so long as you pay me 10 yuan. Hello, I am the judge in hell and I can do the same thing for 5 yuan. Why is my service cheaper? It's because there is no middleman. It was only meant to be a laughing matter. But now, a slight number of elderly would really fall for such tricks. No one could stop the world from changing. After you are in, don't rush to the core region because the materialization expert Johnson is still unable to show up. Our best choice is to split up and search for resources in the peripheral area. We know there's bound to be a large-scale contest in the core region, and we may not have any advantage there in our current form. Hence, don't waste your time away. Go and get whatever that is available, Lu Xu reminded Lu Xiaoyu before they were separated in the remains. After all, he was worried about Lu Xiaoyu's safety when he was not around. Lu Xiaoyu gave a nod of assurance, looking like a cute doll, of course. Only then did Lu Xu glance around but he was surprised by the sight on the island, some unaffiliated practitioners were forming unions with one another. The world was never short of ambitious speechmakers and the cultivation realm was no different. A class D practitioner was standing tall on a reef, delivering his passionate speech in English, at present times, we, the individual practitioners, must unite together in order to survive. We are a team, supporting and caring for one another, to fight back our enemies in the remains, be it evil souls or hardships. And I have a dream, that one day, 
all practitioners no longer have to worry about their cultivation resources. I have a dream. Lu Xiaoyu found a place to eat her snacks, while Lu Xu put on his cap and mask and leaned in for the speech under the reef. It was common at Cocheng, where such practitioners came together for their last chance. However, what they did not realize was that no matter how united they were, a bunch of class D's, E's, and F's were still small fries. Actually, though, many were motivated by the speech. As a matter of fact, sometimes you may not be able to see through things unless you are an outsider. Lu Xu used to think that no one would believe the gimmicks of advertising. He believed people of sound mind would never get brainwashed by a few deceptive phrases. But the truth was, some people were willing to be brainwashed, and they enjoyed it. Lu Xu had difficulty understanding such a phenomenon, although it truly existed. Meanwhile, the audience under the reef were almost convinced in forming an organization on site and pledged their loyalty to their leader on the reef. Lu Xu was amused by their widespread enthusiasm. In fact, many practitioners and metahumans were not from the top tiers of society. Before the regeneration of spirit qi, some of them might have been an ordinary technician or an underperforming student, whose fate was changed by their cultivation aptitudes. Seeing that many were yet to be persuaded by him, the speaker took out his props from his pocket, quiet, please. Some people still do not believe the strength of unity. But please take a look at this piece of steel cable, which is easily broken if there is only one strand. Following his words, he snapped the cable apart at once. Lu Xu was shocked by the cliché example. It seemed like the person had changed chopsticks to steel cables just because a practitioner could easily break a bundle of chopsticks. Lu Xu carefully studied the material and thickness of the cables. He estimated that one strand could bear the weight of up to 500 kilograms. If there were multiple strands and no one could break them, it would bring out a much better effect than snapping 10 chopsticks effortlessly, which ran counter to his initial purpose. However, the speaker took out another steel cable consisting of eight strands and handed it over to Lu Xu, give it a try, young man. We can break one strand, but how about eight? Chapter 392, Association of Unaffiliated Practitioners Unlike Lu Xiaoyu, Lu Xu could understand him without the need for translation software. To the speaker, the demonstration was merely an addition to his already perfect speech as he never expected anyone would be able to rip eight strands of steel cable apart, which could bear weight of up to 4,000 kilograms. Even if anyone could, he would not be wasting his time here listening to his speech. Lu Xu pondered, it would not be very nice of him to ruin the speaker's laudable efforts thus far. Apparently, the man had taken his own interest into consideration in uniting the individual practitioners and those willing to join, were likely to be short of manpower and resources themselves. In the merit-based large organizations, they might not be able to enjoy many benefits and that was where entrepreneurship came into play. In general, each one of them had their own agendas. Thus, how could he spoil the mood? Following this thought, Lu Xu did not hold out his hand for the cable which was wrongly interpreted by the speak as a lack of confidence. The latter insisted and smiled, don't be shy, brother. Just give it a try and see whether we can break it. It is not just a steel cable, but to let you experience the strength of unity. As Lu Xu started applying his force, one strand ruptured with a crack. From Simon Baker's distress, plus 666. Before the rest could react, there was another round of incessant cracking sounds. It was even easier to break the remaining strands after the first. Under the immense pulling strength, the entire bundle was fractured apart. From Simon Baker's distress, plus 999. Simon was petrified. Could you please return to your bloody seat, judge? All of the members of his audience were in shock by the display of strength as well. From David's distress, plus 333. From. Lu Xu felt sorry for the lame reference. However, being a market spoiler was awesome. Honestly, he felt guilty for his actions. The fantasy that a union of low level individual practitioners could contend with established organizations for resources 
boiled down to their inability to excel in reality. As a result, they would rather fool themselves with such blatant lies than to accept their own weaknesses. But Lu Xu had shattered their dreams with his sheer strength. Even he himself thought it was too much. Everyone stared at Lu Xu in a mixed feeling of disbelief and irritation, with the urge to beat him up but no courage to do so. They knew fully well that the young man had a clear advantage in physical strength over them. But which expert would hide themselves in such an idle crowd? Did you not have better things to do? There was grief and indignation too. Besides being suppressed by other powerful organizations, their ambition of forming a team on their own had been trashed by an expert too. Do not push us too hard. Lu Xu wanted to apologize, but deemed it inappropriate to portray the Chinese in such an unfriendly light. At the very least, he was representing the image of China overseas. It was then that his profound knowledge came into play. Why did he study so hard for and for so long? Was it to realize his childhood dream to be a scientist? Of course not. Then, Lu Xu bowed 90 degrees like a Japanese, Gomen Nasai. Normally, in Japanese, sari could be translated as Suma Mason, but a more sincere version was Gomen Nasai. And Lu Xu was being very genuine. Then, Lu Xu immediately left the place. After he returned to Lu Xiaoyu, not only did he take off his cap and mask, he also changed into a new set of clothes. With more practitioners arriving in Kochang, the beach was now crowded with people, with some in swimsuits. If you took a look around, you would see mostly Caucasians. Lu Xiaoyu glanced over at Lu Xu, her head tilted, what did you do over there? Lu Xu put on a dramatic face, to preach my life philosophies. You see, there are so many people in the world awaiting enlightenment. Just say you went over there to be an idiot. Don't be so pompous. Just a while ago, thousands of distress points were clocked in. Despite the thirst for more, Lu Xu was unable to evoke such a huge wave of animosity yet. Lu Xiaoyu replied calmly, it is preparation time now. Shouldn't we do our best to unite as many forces as we can? Or at the very least, to avoid any conflicts at all cost? Only then can we spare more time for the resources inside. Lu Xu paused for a second, you are a genius, Xiaoyu. Of course. Lu Xiaoyu's eyes were twinkling. The next instant, Lu Xu ran to the beach in search of unions. Currently, the unaffiliated practitioners were also copying one another and trying to form teams, so that they might have more helpers in the remains. Meanwhile, being utterly shameless, Lu Xu was trying to join every team he saw using his clumsy English. Moreover, as a self-proclaimed Class E strength-type metahuman, in spite of his average capabilities, his skills type added much value to his identity. Thus, he managed to join most groups he applied to. Speaking of which, almost half of the individual practitioners on the beach had become his teammates now. It was estimated that all would arrive at Ko Chang from Pattaya by night. At this moment, Lu Xu suddenly ran into a Chinese group. To his surprise, he saw the fairy girl whom he met upon their arrival in Thailand. She had tied her hair up, looking neat and brisk. Moreover, she was the leader of the team. The girl also froze for a second upon seeing Lu Xu, she was obviously able to recognize him, do you want to join us? What class are you? I'm a strength type metahuman of class E. Lu Xu grinned. There was not much reaction in her group. Although Class E's were considered rather remarkable among unaffiliated practitioners, this team was formed by elites and accepted no one below Class D and non-Chinese practitioners. To them, underperforming members might drag down the productivity of the entire group. However, the girl smiled after pondering for a few seconds, Welcome, our new member. As Chinese people, we should help one another. My name is Meng Jingchun, taking reference from Zen, Chinese character Chan belongs to him who finds peace, opposite to Chinese, Jing, in grief. How about you? Bravo, hello. Lu Xu had never paid much attention to the meaning behind his name. 
Thus, he mused for a long moment before replying, My name is Lu Mu, because the fortune teller once said I lack wood, Chinese character Gmu, in my five elements asterisk. Asterisk five elements refer to metals, wood, water, fire and earth, a theory held by ancient Chinese to make up the physical universe and was also used for fortune telling purposes. Chapter 393, Li Dafang a Chinese elite team was thus formed under Meng Jingchan's lead. Actually, those unable to join the group named Team Jingchan were rather envious of Lu Xu. In their eyes, the team consisted purely of Class D practitioners, which appeared to have a much more promising prospect than other groups of varying abilities. Meng Jingchan suddenly raised a question, has anyone been to Remains before? She looked around, only to see shakes of the head. It was a rare opportunity for the individual practitioners to enter the remains. Before Li Xianyi's return to the Golden Foundation, all unaffiliated practitioners were refused entry to remains by major organizations, unable to even steal some leftovers. Thus, their disposition towards the foundation could be traced down to their offering of benefits. Certainly, their hostility would target the foundation just like how they did to the major organizations if the former became a hindrance to their interests. Vested interest had long since been the goal of most activities. Meng Jingchan's eyes swept through the over 20 team members one by one and skipped Lu Xu subconsciously. After all, how could a mere class E have experience within remains when other class Ds did not? She smiled sweetly, since we are all Chinese people, we must have one another's back in the remains. When we get out, we can call one another comrades in arms. Here I vow, I am willing to offer anything I find that may be of any help to you. Lu Xu nodded his head in appreciation of the girl's generosity. She was also aware that personal interest, not slogans, was the key to binding a team together. In any case, the Golden Foundation was the only organization that acted on ideologies. It was an effective ice-breaking technique. Another person replied, smiling, count me in. If I find anything suitable, I am willing to offer it to you too. Of course, don't forget me if you find anything I can use. I'm water type. However, it was always easier said than done. Who knows what would happen in the event of finding treasures? At the moment, the team was directed towards a more friendly and all beneficial direction under Meng Jingchan's guidance. In Lu Xu's opinion, the significance of such small scale organizations was help and support in the remains, or a sense of psychological security. The possibility of a long lasting connection was slim. Lu Xu volunteered too, same. If I find something, but a middle-aged man interrupted, Little Lu, just keep yourself safe for now. Take the opportunity of the rich spirit chi in the periphery to increase your level. Lu Xu raised his brows in defiance. Who's your Little Lu? Do you have the right to address me that way? It suddenly reminded Lu Xu of those office newbies in the TV dramas, being bossed around to serve others. But it did not bother him too much. He was only here for fun and clearly was not interested in any further connections. In the remains, camaraderie was pointless. Yours is yours and mine is mine, do they not have any bloody idea of that? In this aspect, Lu Xu would never show his modesty. He was fighting for a better life for Xiaoyu and himself. Thus, his competitors were equivalent to his enemies. Moreover, for the past two experiences, his rivals in the remains were either the Heavenly Network or Daoyuan class students, rendering it impossible to forcefully take things from them. But this time, he could do whatever he wanted to. When darkness fell upon the island, Lu Xu dragged Lu Xiaoyu into their conversation, mainly to give her some exposure on the outside world. But Lu Xiaoyu's age startled many, Lu Mu, as a classy, how can you protect your younger sister? How absurd! Lu Xiaoyu was stunned for a long moment, Lu Mu? Class E? She rolled her eyes at once before going back to her snacks. The middle-aged man named Mo Xingqi started recounting about the various major organizations like a storyteller. P. 
People like him existed everywhere, and they always seemed to know everything under the sun despite their incompetence at work. There were also those who could not even afford a 100,000 yuan car but were dead familiar with all brands of vehicles. Nowadays, the Department of Faith Theory in Europe has the strongest average capabilities. They enjoy a complete set of inherited skills and even cultivation resources provided by disciples. Thus, DFT is the head of all major European organizations. Its predecessor was the Court of Religious Judges. Though strong, they lacked manpower. The most important heritage in Europe is kept by the DFT as well. Moreover, other associations are kind of special. While we can awaken to magical powers, they can bring the bloodline of ancient deities back to life. The deities is a representative of such organizations. The North Americans have the Phoenix Society. They have no inherited skills and only metahumans. But it's said that they are already able to stimulate awakening. The Kalorlo in India have inherited skills too. But they were greatly damaged in the Baymang remains early this year and are currently trying to restore their power. Egypt and other Middle East countries, Emo Xingqi spluttered on before lowering his voice mysteriously, actually, as Chinese people, our main enemies are the Japanese collection of gods. Despite having a few doves in the past, they were soon wiped out by the internal chauvinists. Furthermore, their people are here too. If we run into them inside, fight if you can or run if you can't. They will never be friendly to us. Lu Shu's eye brightened, as expected, collection of gods was indeed Japanese. Since they were here, he must treat them well. Meanwhile, a group of fairies were arriving at the coast, fully loaded with practitioners. Li Yixiao was easily recognizable in the crowd. The distinguished heavenly king actually took a packed fairy with the other practitioners. Besides, Li Yixiao was wearing a cap and a mask, as if unwilling to be recognized. He had put them in his backpack ever since he realized the mistake at the market earlier. Having seen Lu Xu from afar, Li Ishio immediately walked towards him, elated. But before he spoke, Lu Xu stood up when others had yet to notice, Hello, I am Lu Mu, a strength type class E. Li Ishio was stunned, but understood at once. Then, he took a glance at the circle of people on the beach. Amused, he greeted them with a smile, Hello, everyone. I am Li Dafeng, class F. The corner of Lu Xu's lips twitched in shock. Meanwhile, Meng Jingchan gave him a polite smile, my apologies. We do not accept class Fs here. Li Yixiao? Chapter 394, Cross Dockers Li Yixiao froze still. He did not know that only class Ds were allowed entry, and even Lu Xu, that a class E, was allowed in due to the special conditions of his strength type. But it was too late. Well, Li Ishia was thinking hard for a reasonable excuse, I actually can be a class D too. Clever move. It would be too bloody obvious if he had copied Lu Xu and claimed to be a class E strength type as well. Thus, he upped his abilities by one level. Meng Jingchan still declined politely, my sincere apologies, but you don't have to do this. We need to take care of ourselves in the remains anyway, so you can't fool us. Furthermore, we only accept class Ds, with Lu Mu the sole exception due to his strength type. Then, Lu Xu offered Li Ishiao an opportunity, how about show us what you've got? Li Dafang, you said you were a class D, so what type of capabilities do you have? Come on, show us. Right, Li Ishiao seized the chance, let me show you. I'm a strength type class E2. Then, he immediately punched a fist in a reef, which collapsed with a loud bang. See? I'm really a class D. Li Yixiao raised his head up high in pride. Meng Jingchan hesitated for two seconds before a smile appeared on her face, well then, welcome to Team Jingchan. Not sure about the rest, Lu Xu had an intuition that Meng Jingchan had seen through Li Yixiao's pretense without making it clear. She was a smart girl. Could it be she was planning to seek Li Yixiao's help in the remains? After all, they could be considered teammates. But based on Li Yixiao's personality, 
it would be a wiser choice to deny one's connection with him inside. Just when Emo Xingqi continued his stories about the various organizations, Li Ishia whispered to Lu Xu, Why did you abandon me, kid? Oh, right. We forgot about you, Lu Xu replied. From Li Ishiao's distress, plus 399. Back then, Li Ishiao was out and hid from Li Xiani, who was inside the safe house. Thus, Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu had subconsciously thrown Li Xiao to the back of their minds when they hurried on their way. Li Xiao scratched his head in embarrassment, could you please find a better excuse, boy? He wanted to cross the sea directly with the aid of Lu Xu's watertight powers, but the latter had long disappeared before he realized. Meanwhile, Emo Xingqi was narrating the founding stories of North America's Phoenix Society. According to him, its predecessor was a college fraternity comprising top scorers, who happened to have extremely high chances of power awakening. Under the collaboration of their metahuman members, the Phoenix Society finally clinched the position as the first metahuman organization in North America. In addition, a student-led society backed by consortia, their history could be traced back to before the regeneration of Spirit Qi. Just when Emo Xingqi's face was beaming with joy, Lu Xu slotted in an unexpected comment, You are really my idol, brother Emo. Despite your weak abilities, you are a walking encyclopedia. From Emo Xingqi's distress, plus 199. Ouch, that hurts. Emo Xingqi almost choked and remained silent for a long while. Only a few moments ago, he was the one who looked down upon Lu Xu's capabilities. However, Based on Lu Xiaoyu's understanding of Lu Xu, she knew the petty Lu Xu would definitely find a chance for revenge. At the same time, Lu Xu sent his corpse dog and concealed arrow to scrape against the snow mountains. It was fine that he could not sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, since the energy lost could be fully compensated by the distress points gained. But it was a different issue about his sea of qi and snow mountain, as there were no shortcuts, just sheer diligence. Lu Xu felt as if he was back to the days when he just took up his sword, when his dream was to unlock his sea of qi and snow mountain one day, wielding nature as his sword. Back to reality, every member of Team Jingchan was sharing his or her knowledge about the cultivation realm, so as to complement one another's existing views in preparation for future crises. This was useful to Lu Xu, who had limited access to external information besides the Golden Foundation Forum. Meng Jingchan warned, actually, the Phoenix Society's working style is rather unreasonable. Those self-proclaimed elites love to poke their noses around, so it's best if we can stay away from them. Another person laughed, the Japanese are an even tougher target. I went for a trip to Japan early this year and realized that the Collection of Gods is their one and only organization. But they have a population of hundreds of millions. Moreover, every practitioner, even commoner tourists, are under surveillance there. Li Xiao pursed his lips, sooner or later we are going to uproot their homes. I'm not done with them. No one showed any form of disagreement at his comment, as if it was a general opinion. Suddenly, Meng Jingchan turned to Lu Xu who had remained quiet ever since. Due to her upbringing, the girl was mature and empathetic during interpersonal interactions. She interpreted it as Lu Xu's awkwardness at finding common topics. In an attempt to include all team members, she prompted, smiling, Lu Mu, do you have anything to contribute? Lu Xu was surprised by the sudden change of focus. He took a careful consideration before replying, well, I know that your fish will taste sour if you steam it with vinegar. From Meng Jingchan's distress, plus 199. From Li Yixiao's distress, plus 110. From. A tinge of awkwardness started permeating through the air as everyone else had difficulty continuing the conversation. Meng Jingchan paused for a long moment, anything else? Right, yes, Lu Xu nodded, drinking a bag of milk before sleep will cost you a few bucks more than sleeping without drinking milk. From Meng Jingchan's distress, plus 299. From. Li Ishiao drew a startled breath, his brother Lu Xu was really no ordinary person. Lu Xu's joker personality was like a torch in the darkness, clear at one glance. 
At the moment, Lu Xu had been secretly labeled the most unreliable member of the team. Whoever saw him in the remains must hide away or run as far as possible so as not to be tied down by this burden. But Lu Xu had not had enough fun yet. Grinning from ear to ear, he asked Xiao Yu, Do you have anything to add? Lu Xiaoyu gave the group a serious nod, if you are accidentally burned but have no wound cream with you, toothpaste can be helpful. You will forget about your pain after brushing your teeth for three hours. Also, you can't drink mandarins and milk together because mandarins are not potable. Then, she shot Lu Xu a smug look, I did not fail you, did I? From Mang Jingchan's distress, plus 666. From the entire team froze in shock. Clearly you two were siblings. But could you please behave yourselves? We are not hiring cross dockers. Chapter 395 The Position of the Golden Foundation At the moment, the Kochang Beach was bustling with crowds. Even when the darkness had thickened, there were still tour guides ferrying to and fro between the island and Pattaya to transport goods and materials which were then sold at high prices to practitioners. Goods included beer, barbecue grills, barbecue ingredients and fuel for campfires. Now, the beach was well lit with many campfires surrounded by people, all narrowly spaced together. The periphery of the beach was occupied by less sociable individual practitioners for rest. Some of them had ventured deeper into the island in search for quietness, but were soon deterred back to the seashore by the howling at night. The sound did not seem that scary in populated areas. A group even started dancing to the howling. They had impressive guts. Crowds brought along a sense of security. But when one entered the woods on their own, the wailing sounded so doleful as if it had come from the depths of the infinity inferno. Despite parading their courage so as to save face, many could not help but begin to wonder just how terrifying it would be inside the remains. Currently, the male-to-female ratio on the beach was around 8 to 2. The drastic difference did not lie in the male's higher chances at awakening, as there were no gender differences in terms of cultivation aptitudes and in some cases, the females even had greater advantages. But the key point was, most females across the world were not fond of violence. Thus, there were generally more men than women in events such as a competition for resources in the remains. Even so, girls like Meng Jingchan were certainly of the ambitious type. She could not be described as pretty, but there was a tad masculine vibe within her. Lu Xu did not have the chance to take a closer look at her earlier on the ferry, but now he noticed that Meng Jingchan's skin was rough, as though she had been suffering from prolonged exposure under the sun. Moreover, her relatively large build and deep eye sockets made her look like a half-blood. Just when Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu ended the conversation with their incredibly awkward remarks, a commotion broke out at the edge of the beach. Unexpectedly, Lu Xu turned to see Ji Wei arguing with the bunch of dancing practitioners. Emo Xingqi whispered, that bunch is from the Phoenix Society. Their leader is a Class B metahuman, capable of controlling air pressure. The rest look unfamiliar to me. The Phoenix Society members wore an arrogant look just as usual. When others kept it low-key within their own circles, the Phoenix Society was having an all-out party and did not take anyone else into their consideration. Elitist pride. Everyone's attention was drawn by the confrontation. Then, Ji Wei explained calmly, don't let the commoners deliver any more goods to you. The remains can open any time, and if they get involved, they can hardly survive. The Class B metahuman of the Phoenix Society was sitting on the beach half-naked, his muscles perfect like a sculpture. The man put on a sly smile, they are happy to get money, and we are happy to spend money. This is how the world works. And I believe this is none of your business, the Golden Foundation, or not. Before he could spit out his last syllable, Li Xianyi had descended from the sky, hovering besides the Class B expert rather casually then what else could he say? In fact, he was just testing the foundation. There had been a few conflicts between the Phoenix Society and the Golden Foundation, but the former had the ability to overtake the latter by depending on their rich manpower and rapid development. 
And now, he was simply teasing them out of boredom, but had unexpectedly attracted Li Xianyi to the site straight away. Three of diamonds. A of trump suit. What the? Why did you counter me with A of trump suit? What for? Ji Wei smiled and chased away all the fairies and warned them not to come back again. Although unwilling to obey, the Phoenix Society could not do anything but keep quiet. On the other hand, Meng Jingchan suddenly sighed in admiration, how I wish we can join their world one day as a class C, or even class B. It was a common trend for practitioners to anticipate the lives of upper levels. Just like in video games, any player would hope to up his level and became a celebrity on the server. It was a dazzling era. In foreign countries, practitioners enjoyed the same lifestyle as celebrities. They had tens of thousands of followers on Facebook and also plenty of girls to flirt with at the bar. But Lu Xu thought, had Li Xianyi not made his successful ascension to Class A, the position of the Golden Foundation would have been toppled in no time. In times of depleted spirit qi, cultivation was an extremely difficult feat everyone was putting in twice the effort but receiving only half the gains. However, after the regeneration of spirit qi, the rate of practicing had been significantly improved. It seemed unfair to people like Li Xianyi. Back in their times, they had to overcome too many obstacles in training, like nurturing a stick of flowers in drought. But now, it was spring. Nonetheless, unfairness was the norm in this world. One had to have the capabilities to enjoy a fairer treatment. And there was no justice in the face of fate. Closing his eyes for rest, Lu Xu's flying daggers started scraping against the snow mountain at a faster rate. Despite being one of the strongest currently on the beach, he was still not satisfied. Just like how he strived to be the top performer in his studies, he would endeavor to do his best in whatever he set his mind to. Just when the fairies left the beach, another round of deafening howling suddenly swept outwards from the inner regions of Ko Chang, as if something had crawled out from the abyss. The sound seemed to have been produced by 10,000 people being caned. Some girls' faces had paled in terror. Sometimes, the young loved to be adventurous without having a clear idea of how much risk they were taking. At the end of the day, they would realize in horror that they were not ready to face the path they had chosen. Many had already planned on retreating upon hearing the baying. Lu Xu turned to Lu Xiaoyu with a smile, scared. No, Lu Xiaoyu shook her head calmly, you must, come out alive. Be safe. Rest assured. Let's go, then. Okay. The remains were finally open. Just when terror seized everyone's mind, to Meng Jingchan and the others' astonishment, Lu Xu led Lu Xiaoyu straight to the core regions of Ko Chang. In their impression, Lu Xu used to be a Class E rookie, who was rash enough to bring his younger sister to such a peril. But they had brains. The young man's composure was telling them that he was never as simple as they had thought. He was probably an expert hidden among the individual practitioners. A true expert. Meng Jingchan could be positive about at least one thing, that this Lu Mu had certainly been to remains before. But the question was, could the little girl be a pro as well? In a split second, a white fog rolled out from deep inside Ko Chang and devoured everyone without exception. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens